Hey buddy Crow back again and as you can see I recently got the Super Pockets, the Capcom and the Taito editions. This is from Hyper Mega Tech. Time to global Hyper Mega Net. The offshoot of Blaze Entertainment who also does the Evercade which is why it says it's compatible with the Evercade up in the corner there. But the, I guess the question is, is do you really want this if you're looking for an Evercade? And that's kind of one of the reasons why I bought these. Uh, I could have just bought one, but for whatever reason, I decided to buy both. They were $59.99. That's U.S. I bought these off of Best Buy's website. I did that rather than buy for fun stock because I knew I wouldn't get the Peggy logo anywhere on these. But then again, if you watch my Evercade stuff, you know that I don't like the Peggy logo on my stuff. So um, <clears throat> we got the... Street Fighter one. Let's see, we got on the, on the side of the box there, we've got some of the uh, screenshots of the games that are on it. Also, I've noticed that uh, this is like numbered two and th that one's numbered one, so they may be coming out with more of these. Uh, here's the back that's pointing out certain things. I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, those buttons on the back are. Um, you'll probably need them from Street Fighter if you're going to be playing Street Fighter because other, there's only four buttons on the front of it otherwise. Um, but yeah, we'll open these up. So uh, we'll go through the games. There's 12 Capcom games on this one. But if you've got an Evercade EXP, like I do, you probably may not even want this because uh, you have all 12 of these games already built into the EXP and I think even four more that aren't on here. Um, I that's Which is why I was going to go for just the Taito one because none of these Taito games are on the Evercade uh, cartridge or built in otherwise. So, so yeah, and... Um, there's no Wi-Fi in this, so it's not easily updatable. I do, I have heard that you can update the firmware, but you'd have to do it the old way. Um, but I don't think that's the target. I think the target market for these things is like the same as the My Arcade stuff. If you want the Taito games, you would buy this in a handheld format. Um, a little bit more expensive than the My Arcade stuff, but um, we'll see if it's actually worth it in the end. Uh, we'll do some comparison in size to other stuff, and we'll try this out. I do plan on taking these apart, but I'm going to save that for another video, uh, and I will be filming that another day. So uh, let's uh, let's first let's let's uh, open up. We'll open up the uh, Capcom one. Oh, look, you know what? I think there's ah there is seals on the side there. So let me get a knife out. All right. Might as well do the other one as well. There has been a mix-up with. The limited edition where at least one person did get a uh, Capcom Super Pocket with Taito games on it. <laughs> Not Capcom and Taito games, just Taito games. And it was funny, they got both uh, Both the, uh, this is the limited edition, they were more translucent pair, um, translucent uh, cases and stuff. But the Taito one had the Taito games on it, and the Capcom one had the Taito games on it, so somebody screwed up there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that has happened here as well. I doubt it. I think that was like maybe just a one in a million thing. Uh, hopefully, you would think. So, and, and there we got uh, nice finger grips here to pull the whole thing out. I wonder if that was intentional. Uh, but there we go. There's our super pocket. Looks like there's some other, uh, something else in there. Oh, look, they're advertised. I don't know why... They created uh, Hyper Megatech to release these handhelds. I don't know why they could, couldn't could have just done it under Blaze. And why is it not an Evercade if it plays Evercade games? These are all questions. Um, and look, they're, they're advertising it big time, too. I mean, it could be something with licensing where they couldn't put these... They had to put these games on a handheld device. They couldn't put it on a cartridge. That may be the case with the Capcom stuff. We do know that's the fact with the Capcom stuff. was just why they were built into the EXP. Um, looks like we've got... A quick start guide. You could win 10 Evercade cartridges. Wow. Sign up to our newsletter and enter www.hypermegatech.com forward slash win. I wonder if you can enter even if you didn't buy one of these. This is like really nice paper. This is really, really thick, uh, smooth paper. It's not cheap paper. I guess the question is too, is how much charge does this right now out of the box? I may have to... Um, well, before we get into that, there's some stuff hidden here that feels like there's something in here. It's probably a charging cable here. Yeah, that's exactly what's down in there. And this is a USB-C cable. So, hmm, right off the bat. Okay, uh, yeah. I can't really complain anything about the D-pad right off the bat. It does have this very slick, smooth surface I don't know if I'm a fan of. 
Uh, if I'm playing a game with that uses the buttons, they do push. They are just tactile, clicky in. So you are pushing inward, not, but they are concave. So even if you do push downward, you're still going to push in. And here's our volume. So that's our volume rocker. Here's our. <laughs> uh, somebody was asking, "Oh, what kind of what cartridge does it come with?" No, this is not a cartridge. This is just a blank spacer. Because again, I don't think a lot of uh, here we go get more arcade games. That's kind of funny, right there. QR code. They actually bothered to put a sticker on there. Uh, but yeah, there is. <clears throat> I kind of like this idea of having the spacer in here. Okay, so here we have our on off. Oh, it's a nice tactile on off. It's not one where you have to hold it down. It just flip on and flip off. I do like that rather than the hold the button in to turn it down. Turn on. Did it say blaze when I turned it on? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, we'll go with English. This does seem to be nice and loud. Okay, down, up. I see some lead over here. I don't think that's um yeah I don't that's I don't that's stuff I don't normally notice but I do notice it here. Let me turn off lights. Alexa basement lights off. Okay. Let's see if we could get it. It's not really appearing that well on the on the, the monitor here. But there is no, it's visible. <laughs> but let's um you, know, you could just choose easy or normal right off the bat. Oh, I'm putting, hitting the wrong button. Okay, Blaze Limited. So this is a Blaze Eula. Oh, I have to scroll to the end to agree. The battery's pretty damn full already. Comes out of the box fully charged. How about that? At least this one did. So here's the games we're getting on this one. Uh, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. Strider. Let me turn the volume down. I'm probably... Oh, I can't just hold the button down. I got to keep tapping. Okay. Strider. Mercs. 1942. Battle. 1943. Battle of Midway. 1944. Loop Master. Bionic Commando. Captain Commando. Final Fight. Forgotten Worlds. Ghosts and Goblins. Mega Man. And I, yeah, it starts off there. Um, these are actually in alphabetical order, but it just starts you off at Street Fighter 2. And I don't know why. Uh, it's not like you could play multiplayer on this thing, so I don't know. <laughs> you'd, you'd just be playing against the um, CPU. Anyway, let's get the other Super Pocket open. All right. Uh, same poster. So here's a look at our Taito one. Let's turn this one on. Did it say Blaze? When it, yeah, Blaze. So what's with the Hyper Megatech thing? Time to global hyper mega net. Okay, this one doesn't have the light bleed. This one does. I wonder if that's something I could fix because I do plan on opening these up. Maybe it's just not sealed the against the screen as well. I don't know. Uh, let's turn the volume down on this one. All right, with this one. Oh, this one actually does start at the beginning. Bubble bobble. Kadash. Ooh, Kadash is a good one. Again, I would have preferred this one uh, over the Capcom one. I just bought the Capcom one because why not? Check and pop. Don Doko Don. Elevator action, uh, football champ, growl, kiki kai kai. That one's not ringing any sort of bell for me. Uh, Liquid Kids, Operation Wolf, Puzzle Bobble, great one. That's a, that would be great to have on hand out there. Rastan, Space Invaders, Space Invaders 91, Fairyland Story, well, The Legend of Kage, New Zealand Story, Vulified, which is the uh, sequel to Kicks, or at least one of the sequel to Kicks, if I'm remembering quite correctly, and uh, Bubble Bobble. And yeah, that bubble will be started on Bubble Bobble, of course. And this one, the battery was full as well. Usually they're like half full, so that's pretty cool. Let's do a quick size comparison here. So the design of this is clearly modeled after the Game Boy. So here we have a size comparison of a regular original Game Boy compared with the Super Pocket. However, this is more in line with the design of the Game Boy Color. It's a little bit tiny smaller than the Game Boy Color. Sidewise, it's a little bit, hmm. Yeah, take that. It's a, I would say it's just about on par with the Game Boy Color. Here's a quick comparison against the uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Why not? We got a Game Boy Advance here, just a regular one. There you go. Here's a size comparison against the Lynx. It's uh, 
Two of them side by side are still thinner than a lynx. So yeah, I just realized the other thing I should have compared these two are the other Evercade handhelds. So here it is uh, compared to the size of the original Evercade handheld. Uh, if we pulled it sideways, you see it's it's just about the same width, maybe even just a little bit thinner. No, it is exactly the same width. Uh, but height-wise, yeah, it's a lot smaller. And of course, if we compare it to the EXP, got my colored one there. <laughs> um, Size-wise, it is just a little bit wider. If we, we're, we're tilting this one up horizontally, that is, or vertically. Um, and height-wise, the, the Everett Kate EXP is like so much more taller, and I accidentally started Bubble Bobble. But that's okay. That's a good game to accidentally start. So one thing I'm noticing is uh, with the volume control, there's no indicator that shows up on screen as to what the volume's doing. Let's hit our, ooh, that's a nice animation there. Let's check that out on the uh, Capcom one. Look at that, that's pretty cool. I do like that animation, that is pretty slick. Uh, Taito, Evercade, so if we had an Evercade cartridge in here, which we will try out. Settings, display. Okay, we got our same options that we have. We have original ratio. I think in this instance, you'd want original ratio rather than pixel perfect, just so you can fill up the screen. And you could choose to have scan lines or not. Nah, I usually go with no scan lines. Sound, okay. Separate menu music and sound options. Language is which is what it asks for difficulty. Okay, here's where we can... Oh, so it's a universal thing. It's not per game, okay. Well... There's not much else. Let's check out one of the games on here. I guess we have to hit the menu button again to go back to Taito. Let's see. What's a good one to try out? All right, let's do some. Let's try some Puzzle Bobble here. And this should be the arcade version. Oh, we can see a little bit of light bleed in the corner there. So, um, not perfect, but it is an IPS screen, so it does look very good. And it is appropriately called Puzzle Bobble and not Bust a Move. So, how do we enter a credit? Assuming this is the arcade version. Oh, yeah. down here at the bottom. I completely forgot there were start and select buttons. Yeah, so select, start, one play. Uh, so it might be modified ROM, so you can't choose two player. Course. But yeah, um, it is small, but I can definitely see what's going on here. But with, don't worry, we'll try something a little bit more challenging to view with this thing. Let's bank it off the wall there. There we go. Yeah. All right, nice. Okay, so if we hit the menu there, we can save. We have save states. Controls, can we... Oh, just telling me what the controls are. Display, we can choose that again here. And quit. I don't think we need to really take a look at anything on the Capcom collection, but let me grab some Evergate carts and we'll try some stuff out here. All right, so I've got myself a couple of cartridges to test out. If we click on Evercade, we can see no cartridge inserted. What's Evercade? Okay. Oh, look at this. Are these... what Game highlight. Oh, it looks like it's like advertising Evercade stuff in, in here. Leading publishers. 400 plus games. Highlights. Why are they advertising them? One of the more expensive collections. Technos Collection 1. Um, collection 2. Interplay. Atari Collection 2. Duke Nuke. Oh, come on. You're, it's not out yet. Soon, but not yet. And none of these are clickable. It's just kind of showing a bunch of stuff. Find out more. Here's a, here's a barcode. Okay. So if we go up. Okay. Hint. So, no cartridge inserted. This spacer cartridge is really in there. All right, let's try Namco Museum Collection 1. Okay, I uh, popped it in. It popped right up. I actually was... Well, one of the reasons I wanted to try Namco Museum Collection is because the Namco Museum Collections don't work on the Evercade VS. Uh, I just wanted to show that this would work in the uh, Super Pocket, and it's because it's a handheld. The reason they don't work in the VS is because it's a, considered a console and not a handheld. So Pac-Man, of course, you're going to play... We'll try the, uh, this is like the NES version of Pac-Man. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, you're, I would say it looked a little stretched out, but I don't think this is considered to be a widescreen. I think this is 
And then I think about it, I think this is more of a 4-3 aspect ratio. Pause, we can do our save states and everything. Let's quit. Let me see if I can get the Namco Collection 2 cartridge working. Okay, I got the Namco 2 Collection working, it just needed a cleaning. So, uh, a little alcohol and Q-tip, and we got our Namco Collection 2 up. Let's try a classic. One of the best games. Oh, I thought I clicked Spider House 2. Oh, well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Spider House 3. Just as good. Yeah, we can just be fine. All right. All right, we're going to try some of the Cathedral and Owl's Awakening cartridge. Because I believe Cathedral does not work. That's good. But I think it, yeah, this game currently isn't supported, which means it could be someday in the future, like, like, oh man, this volume's too high. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Cathedral is not supported, but it doesn't mean it won't be someday in the future. Unfortunately, I think if you are going to uh, get it working, if there is a firmware, you would need to update this like you would update the original Evercade, plug this into your PC, and, uh, and r flash the memory that way. But... I was awakening should work just fine. Also, I uh, wonder if load my save states are in there from uh, before. So yeah, when I played this on the Evercade VS, I had save states. So my save states are in here. Of course, we got to try the best collection on the Evercade, the Worms Collection, with the best game on the Evercade, Worms Armageddon. Looking good, and you know what? This is four three aspect ratio. Which I actually kind of... See, I wonder... That's probably why Cathedral... One of the reasons Cathedral doesn't work. It is a Nave game, and it does take uh, advantage of the 69 aspect ratio. But uh, you wind up with black bars on the top and bottom, I believe. Yeah. So let's see. Do I have... Oh, none of my saves actually work here. Is that me? No, it's not me. It's a PC I'm waiting for. Oh, you know what? I have this in... It doesn't look right because I have this in the widescreen aspect ratio. So I'll have to flip that back, actually. All right, kind of small. Uh, maybe a little bit too small for the screen, but still looks like it's playable. I can see what's going on. Obviously, this would be better on the EXP, to be honest, but uh, this will do in a pinch. All right, let's try Atari Arcade 1. And I'm interested in something like Centipede. Because not only is this a Tate game, but it is a um, it's a trackball game. And I remember correctly, it didn't play very well. Okay, we got credits in there. Oh, there we go. There's our button. Small, really small. For something as simple as this, it's still definitely doable. Um, and I don't know if it's just me, but the uh, the controls seem to be improved a bit. And I don't know if that's just a universal thing, if that was part of the updates, or if it's the Super Pocket itself. I'm willing to bet this is a universal fix uh, they did. So this is definitely is a little bit more playable than it was when I originally played it on the Evercade VS. Oh, that'll be interesting. Let's see what Pong looks like on this thing. I doubt they fixed this. No, in fact, it jumps right into the game right away. Yeah, this doesn't quite work. And this is not really representative of what the actual game was in the arcade. All right, this is uh, the Gata East Collection one. I'm just going to put in Burger Time, another Tate mode game. Again, kind of small, but it kind of works. Because the graphics are so simple, it's still easy to make anything, everything out. It's nothing's really cluttered or anything. So, also, I guess if you want to be an absolute madman, you can take the spacer cartridge from the Capcom one, put it into Taito one, and do the same for this. And there you go. I think that's more my style, don't you think? There we go. That's that's the way to be messed up. You know, funny story is I was talking, we went to, uh, me and my sister and my wife and everybody went to uh, Galloping Ghost Arcade. My sister played Burger Time. And she said to me, she finally understood Burger Time. What do you mean? Oh, 
Turns out she thought that the pepper was for seasoning the burgers. She, she just realized that the pepper was for stunning the enemies. And I thought that was hilarious, that she was seasoning the burgers in Burger Time with the pepper. Which, if you think about it, makes a, a much more logical sense. Uh, Total Plan Arcade 2. Let's pop that in there. Let's pick one that that is Tate. Try Twin, Twin Cobra. So I'm doing these on purpose just because this green... Because they are Tate mode is going to be smaller. It's, this is like the worst case scenario for this device. But other than Cathedral, it has uh, played everything I've thrown at it so far. So this is not ideal, but I'm still having no problems playing it. It's just kind of odd. All right, figure I'd throw in one of the computer collections. We'll try Commodore 64 Collection 1. Let's see, what do we want to try on this? Let's load up some impossible mission. There we go. Well, yeah, it's off to a good start there. Okay, that's log off, yeah, because we really can't do anything. Um, well, actually, we can... There we go. Actually, it's just one more I'm going to try. I literally got full void in the mail the other day. Really haven't tried it or anything. Let's plug it in and see if it'll play, because it is a native game. This will play. Well, then why doesn't Cathedral play? This has got to have black boards. I've literally never played. You can actually see some green bleed on the top. There is some of that here. Um, yeah, we got black bars on the top and the bottom. So, yeah, I guess uh, native games do, for the Evercade, do run on this thing as well. I thought it was uh, that was why Cathedral wouldn't work, but I'm not going to get into this. Haven't played this yet. Looks pretty nice, but uh, yeah, there you go. Only one game, I think, so far doesn't work. So, yeah, the Super Pockets. I am actually really like these things. I think I'm more likely to take these out than the Evercade, just on quick trips. Uh, just because they're smaller, uh, they're more compact. I actually do like the feel of them. Um, Weight-wise, it's significantly lighter, I think. Let's get a scale out. All right, so here we have my beat-up scale. Uh, Super Pocket, there's the Capcom one, 5.8 ounces. I assume it would weigh the same, 5.8 ounces. Uh, let's take a look at the original Evercade. 7.7 .7 ounces. Evercade EXP, 9.6, so 9.6 compared to 5, so this is almost like half the weight of this, and it's, it's so much smaller. I was I was thinking, like, what? why would you want this rather than an Evercade? And to be honest, I could see the appeal now. This is so much more convenient to carry around than this, to be honest. And it's like half the price. Uh, I can't remember exactly how much this went for. I would say... This is $60, $59.99. I think this is almost double the price, if not maybe slightly less than that, but still, this is significantly cheaper. It seems to play all the Evercade stuff fine. You do have a smaller screen, though, so that's one downside to that. But actually, you know what a good comparison would be. There we go. Side-by-side -side comparison. But uh, because it's 4.3, the screen size on these games are just only a tiny bit smaller than you would think. Because um, it's not taking up the full screen size of the Evercade EXP. And most of these games are 4 by 3 aspect ratio anyway. So the only thing the, the XP, Evercade EXP can really take advantage of is Tate mode. Which we can do here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There's our Tate mode. And, and now we got a little bit of a smaller screen. But again, you, nobody's going to do this. <laughs> But there you go. I mean, it, the screen size is is just a tiny bit smaller when you take into consideration. Yes, it is a significantly smaller size screen, but four by three games will take up the whole screen size. So we'll just uh, leave it as that. I I actually do like these super pockets. I like them more than I thought I would. If they do come out with more, I'd be interested in seeing what games are on them. I, I don't know how often I'll be putting Evercade cards in there, but to be honest, it, it's not bad at all. I, I definitely take these on trips. So we'll leave it at that, and uh, I will be 
tearing this thing down. I was looking it up, uh, looking around. We do have screw holes, so it should be fairly easy to take apart. So maybe that'll be something I'll do in a couple days. Uh, it's a shame about the screen bleed, but to me, it's not a... I mean, I, I think your your results will vary from from, from unit to unit because it doesn't seem to be as bad on the Taito one as it is here on the Capcom one. But, um, yeah, I can't complain about it. It's not that bad. I know it would bother some people more than others. It just doesn't bother me that much. But, again, I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to see if I can rectify that a little bit. Um, yeah, one of the reasons I'll take it apart is just to look at that, I guess. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.